One Man's Family, brought to you by the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee and Fleischmann's Yeast. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today we present Chapter 14, Book 64, entitled New Year's Eve with the Barber Clan. Well, it's New Year's Eve in the Barber family home out in Seacliff on the edge of San Francisco Bay. Therefore, naturally, it would be New Year's Eve out on the jungle edge of Accra on the African Gold Coast. And that's where Paul is and Nicolette Moore. Not quite prisoners, but certainly undercover while Paul is recovering from head and back injuries received when their hotel cottage was dynamited. A gruff, non-communicative individual has seen that they were fed, given medical attention, and kept out of sight for two weeks now. The rooms they occupy are low, dark, and seem to be part of a larger structure, all of which is included in a walled compound of high, sharp-pointed bamboo stakes. Paul is on his feet for the first time since his injury. You see? You walk as well as you ever did. Yeah, I walk, and that's about all. But that is proof you have no serious damage anywhere. You are a very fortunate fellow, Paul Barber. Well, I made it from the bed to the chair, anyway. And tomorrow you'll make it from the bed to the compound, and presently you... Nicolette. Yes? There's been no word from outside, from Kirby, the American consul. How is it possible? No one supposedly knows where we are. You don't even know that the Christmas message got through to the family, do you? No, Paul. All I could do was give the message to Richardson, and he said he would do his best. Richardson? Who and what is Richardson, anyway? He feeds us, he gives us medical attention, he gives us refuge and shelter. He also guards us. Nicolette, are you sure we're not Richardson's prisoners? All I know is that he has treated us with consideration. He has said that when you are fit to travel, he will point our faces in the right direction. I heard him. Right direction for what? To complete our mission, I should think. I'm Patricia Baldwin. The United States government puts me on the trail of Patricia Baldwin. What do I do? Get myself blown up in Accra, Africa. Laid up for two whole weeks. Martin Whitehead died oh. with a knife in his throat. The little Englishman died also with a bullet in him. You are still alive. That's not the point. Patricia Baldwin is still at large. For all I know, disposed of once and for all. Because I wasn't fast enough on my feet or smart enough. You think it will save the situation to sit here on New Year's Eve and bemoan fate? You think that will help? Nicolette, did I dream it or did I hear Richardson say he didn't know why the United States wanted Patricia Baldwin so badly? Unless for the dubious pleasure of executing her? Yes, he said that. Doesn't make sense. Patricia Baldwin was a Red Cross nurse. She was kidnapped here in Accra by agents in some sort of international intrigue. Do we know that? Well, she was either kidnapped or she left the ship of her own free will. Is that so impossible? Well, that would indicate that she was guilty of something. That she was running away and the United States government is after her. Well? Well, from what we know, Patricia Baldwin, do you see her as a traitress? A young, eager American girl who dedicated her life to Red Cross nurses? Yes, I know, but Europe is so full of poison today. The moral standards have fallen to an ugly level. Patricia Baldwin was young, unsophisticated. Are you trying to tell me that the girl was inoculated with some of this European rottenness? I am only saying that stranger, more wicked things than that have happened, are happening right today. Hmm. I don't like it. Does it make any difference to us? We have a job of finding the girl and turning her over to the government. Does it matter whether we are turning her in as an innocent girl or a scheming woman? Mm. The chase has lost some of its zest. Oh, my idealistic American friend. Don't you Americans ever stop dreaming of utopia? Of valiant, pure-hearted knights and beautiful chaste maidens? And the world simply can't be any better than the rotten, selfish, miserable, diseased minds who live in it, can it? Did you think it could? I suppose I should have known better, but I believe, because I wanted to believe, that the honest and the earnest and the true would be a force against evil so great and so unyielding that goodness and happiness and peace would sometime flood the earth. Perhaps sometime it will. Hmm. But not in our lifetime. No. Not in the lifetime of my brother's children or my sister's children. What about you? Did you purposely have no children of your own because you envisioned what lay ahead? No. No, you did not see ahead? No, it was simply the girl who I wanted to give me those children 
died in that first world holocaust. The first world war? Yeah. I had never heard. I was an American flyer in France. She was an American army nurse. We met in a frontline hospital. We were married by an old French priest in a little church whose roof had been blown off by a German field piece. Two weeks later, an epidemic swept through the hospital like a fire in a grass field. She was gone before you hardly knew her. Ah, what kind of talk is this for New Year's Eve? That is hard. Very hard. But at least... You did not have to watch the one you loved stood up against a wall before a firing squad. Nicolette. Nicolette. That, too, is finished. Oh, visitors. Richardson, come in. Queer. I'll go and see. Oh, what is it? What is it? Just a minute, Paul. I'll be right back in. That about. <sighs> New Year's Eve, 47. Hmm. 1917. 30 years ago. 30? Hmm. And in those years, I've seen with my own eyes a whole continent explode, the civilization crumbling around the edges. I've seen. Here, give me a piece of paper. Pencil. Oh. This is the voice of Europe. And his voice was the voice of Europe. And his words came and say. Today, right now, before New Year's, you get improved Chase and Sanborn coffee. This new blend is the most satisfying coffee you ever tasted, so taste it. Taste it now. You'll hear it being praised to the skies. One man said that first swallow is like getting money from home. Or you may hear experienced shoppers say, the new Chase and Sanborn is the richest, most flavorful coffee money can buy today. What they're all really saying is, taste it. That's the only way you'll ever know how delicious this new blend is. The possibilities of finer coffees are only now fully realized. It's a new coffee experience, an inspired new combination of richer, more flavorful coffees. And the flavor is fully protected at its best and freshest. The new Chase and Sanborn, with all its added flavor, is quickly vacuum-packed as soon as it's roasted. No other container in the world can give you so much coffee goodness. So, taste it. Ask for improved Chase and Sanborn, the new coffee sensation. <laughs> While Paul sat in the jungle hideout writing feverishly and waiting Nicolette Moore's return, back in Seacliff, San Francisco, it's also New Year's Eve. Over at Jack and Betty's house, just across the hedge, those two are holding special open house for the younger generation. Joan and Penny and Skippy are there from the Nicholas Lacey household, Hank, Pinky, and Margaret from the Daniel Murray menage, and then the special adolescent friends of the neighborhood. That's what's going on across the hedge, while at the family home, all the adults are present. Yes, even the cousins are dying. <laughs> I, I think it was New Year's Eve of 90. 97, Henry. Huh? We were on my father's farm the New Year's of 97. I was at Norm, Alaska at 97. <laughs> well, there, Fanny and I were out in the cow pasture with no gate in sight anywhere. Well, maybe it was 98. And how you do hate cows, uh, Well, I said to your mother, I'll do the brave thing. I'll walk behind you and protect you from the rear. Oh, <laughs> it was 98, all right. Coldest 98 in the memory of man. Well, that was the manly thing to do, Dad. Always protect a lady from the rear. <laughs> but what about the danger from ahead? Huh? She's got eyes to see what lies ahead. It's the rear that's open to ambush. <laughs> uh, that's the coldest 98 in the memory of man. Well, fortunately, I'm not afraid of cows myself. <laughs> I'm not afraid of cows. Well, not exactly afraid. It's, it's just that cows and I are not compatible. <laughs> not many cows in Alaska. Huh? Not many cows in Alaska. Too cold. Oh, so there are thousands of cattle in Alaska. Too cold. They freeze. <laughs> but go on with your bucolic New Year's Eve saga of 97, Paul. <laughs> We'd simply gone for a walk on Fanny's home farm, and here we were, completely surrounded by a five-foot barbed wire fence 
in a cow pasture. <laughs> the first time I ever saw Henry unnerved. Oh, just on my toes, alert to danger. <laughs> but at that moment, there wasn't even a cow in sight. Cow's pretty solid. Well, that's Alaska for you. Not a cow in sight, and yet you burst into a sweat. Sweat freezes? <laughs> yeah, only the palms of my hands. Palms of your hands freezes? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Cousin Josiah? <laughs> Alaska? But Dad and Mom are talking about an experience with cows. Cows freeze solid. <laughs> Not cows in Alaska, Cousin Jediah. Hardly any cows in Alaska. Too cold. They're stuffing nonsense. Hardly a cow in Alaska. <laughs> You'd be surprised, Cousin Jediah. Nicky and I took a trip up there one time, and we saw oodles of cattle. Let's see, uh, you're Claudia Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I still want to hear the end of Dad and Mom's adventure with the cows. Forget it. Oh, hey, Dad. Forget it. It isn't worthwhile trying to compete against a certain windbag I could mention. Well, lots of wind in Alaska. <laughs> lots of wind. There's lots of wind a good deal closer to Alaska. <laughs> now, Henry, don't get grumpy. <laughs> yes, don't get grumpy, Hank. Uh -huh. Nice man like you shouldn't ever get grumpy. No, become you. Is that so? Mighty few men improved by a case of the grumps. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Barber, not to change the subject, but... I don't know when I've seen a more beautiful buffet table. Mm, thank you, Nicholas. Sumptuous fare, rare viands. Oh, nonsense, Nicholas. Just a good, healthy snack for around midnight. I insist. Rare and toothsome delicacies. A gourmet's delight and a gourmand's excess. Oh, oh, Nicky, you're wonderful. Claudia Margaret, what's the man talking about? Hey, just plain Claudia, cousin Jediah. <laughs> Dangerous using big words like that. Oh, really? I know the man wants to got a big word caught in his windpipe. Oh, uh, Got a big word caught in his windpipe. Uh, larynx or epiglottis? <laughs> well, laughing matter, the poor fellow choked to death. <laughs> Didn't they call a doctor? What good's a doctor? Well, if I had anything caught in my throat, I'd want a physician. What good's a physician? Oh, no. What good's a surgeon? <laughs> I see your point, cousin Jediah. The only person who could extract a big word caught in your throat... Would be a lexicographer, naturally. Naturally, that. What was that again, my question? <laughs> lexicographer. Lexicographer. <laughs> Coldest 48 in Alaska in the memory of man. Uh, oh, there you are, Dan. Where have you been? I'm getting a smell of this New Year's Eve. I'm getting one last look at 1947, huh? Yeah, that's right. Old Father 47 is turning over a beautiful night, the young 48. 48 for coldest... Hey, hey, wait a minute. You speaking to me, Clipper? 98, not 48. <laughs> coldest year in Alaska in the memory of man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me on the subject of Alaska again, Cousin Jediah. Coldest Cousin year... Cousin Jediah, I've got a question. Gladly, gladly. Let's you and me go out and get one last sniff of the old year before it's too late. Gladly, gladly. Okay, come on. You mean get up out of this chair? <laughs> oh, sure, you don't expect to feel the cold air on your cheek and look up at the glitter of stars from in front of the fire, do you? You know, Fanny, you should have a rocking chair in this room. <laughs> you think so? A rocking chair does something for a person. Well, are you coming with me or aren't you? Gladly, gladly. Oh, I'm on my feet. Come on. Hank, you should ought to have Fanny put in a rocking chair. <laughs> oh, you're an old fraud. <laughs> you had no intention of going out and making a last wish on the stars for 47. <laughs> Nicky, come on, you come. Rather, with pleasure. Will you folks in a little while? Just working up an exercise, my father. Fanny. Claudia Margaret's a young girl. What's that? Claudia Margaret's a young girl. <laughs> Dangerous to let a young girl out of your sight in the garden on a cold night. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> well, it doesn't wear much. <laughs> Cousin Jediah on women's clothes. First thing, she gets cold. Shivers. <laughs> Man puts his arm around her. Huh? What are you talking about? Man puts his arm around her and warms her up a little. <laughs> <laughs> One thing leads to another, and the next thing you know... She's married. Claudia's already married. Next thing you know, you've lost a daughter. Didn't you hear me say that, Claudia? Next thing you know, you're a grandfather. I already am. Ten times over. <laughs> Where are you going, cousin Jediah? Dangerous out in the garden on a cold night. Claudia Margaret's a young girl. Don't you realize... Let him go, Father Barber. <laughs> That's wonderful. Going out to protect Claudia from her husband. Sometimes he doesn't show enough sense to pound sand in a rat hole. Oh, he's intelligent enough. It's just that he doesn't listen. Yeah, he's so absorbed in his own thoughts, he never hears what anyone else said. Unless he's not supposed to hear. Oh, have you had that experience? I'm afraid we have. Your father was talking to Judge Hunter on the phone about some minor change in his will... 
And Jediah didn't miss a word. <laughs> well, we'll riddle him for a moment so we have to spend the precious minutes talking about him. Oh, well, uh, while I was outside, I could see and hear across the heads Jack and Betty's. Is that place bouncing? Mm, what's the younger generation up to? Oh, some of everything. I could see Margaret and some of the smaller fry in the kitchen pulling taffy. Oh, so Betty finally decided on a taffy pull. Uh-huh. The front of the house, the door suddenly popped open and out came a young lady full tilt with pinky hard on her heel. Oh, Dan, not a rough house. Oh, I don't think so. I lost him in the shadow of the hedge, but I think it was more like an excuse for getting out from under Jack and Betty's eyes for a quick smooth. Hmm. Oh. Hey, if, if only Cousin Jediah realized what was going on next door. Oh. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm amused or not. I'm a typical mother. Oh, relax, Hazel. Lasted only for a count of ten, and then they dashed back into the house. Sure, pretending all the time it was a chase, and Pinky never caught up with his delicious prey. Uh, <laughs> it's been going on since Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> well, Henry, when did you all of a sudden become so sad? Huh? <laughs> boy chase girl. Girl slow down so boy will be sure to catch up. Girl pretends struggle at being caught. Girl pretends helpless surrender. But girl responsible for whole sadness. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness, such cynicism on New Year's Eve. Speaking of New Year's Eve, I wonder what Paul's doing tonight. I wonder. He's in some far off place in the world, I believe. Uh, we have no real reason to think so. Oh, I think we have, Father Barber. <laughs> what do you mean, uh, Daniel? Well, last week's cablegram indicated he was across an ocean. Also, the fact that it was strictly censored indicates it's from out of the country. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Did I tell you that I received a letter from Teddy and a New Year's card from Beth Holly? Beth Holly? For goodness sake. How long has it been since we heard from her? Well, she said three years in a card. Oh, longer than that. Beth Holly... Where is she? Down in Hollywood. Doing very well in some capacity with one of the picture studios. Oh, an actress? Well, she didn't say. Would you say you had a letter from Teddy? Yes, it was really to Henry. I was wondering if you were going to take all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my dear. You tell what she said. Just that she wished you were back in the United States and that it wasn't going to be much of a Christmas or New Year's in Germany. Oh, she said much more than that. Yeah, oh, she said it wasn't going to be much of a holiday season in any of the European countries. Well, aren't you going to tell about her being made ward superintendent in the hospital? <laughs> and that one of the young nurses, a Patricia somebody, had an emergency appendectomy and was sent home, and she disappeared on the way home. Well, just gossip. We, we didn't know the girl. Uh, Patricia Baldwin, that was it. You, um, you mean an American nurse just vanished on her way home from Germany? Well, Teddy didn't seem to know any details. How wonderful for her to have been made a superintendent. Mm, glad we got all those packages off before Christmas. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's happened to Claudia and Nikki? Oh, Family, do you know what just happened to Nikki and me out in the garden? Uh, cousin Jediah. <laughs> he caught me with my arm around Claudia. He kicked me away and he shook his finger under my nose. He said, young fella, just what I expected. Mm. Claudia Margaret's a virtuous young girl. And if she's cold, let her come in the house and back up to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, one of these days, somebody's going to have to invite him to keep his nose out of other people's ears. <laughs> well, did you finally get over the idea that you were Claudia's husband and father of her children? <laughs> well, we, we told him, sir, but he was so busy telling us about how arms around the waist led to one thing and another, and in the end, we'd end up not only parents, but grandparents. <laughs> oh, here he comes now. I caught them just like I thought I would. I caught him in the very end. <laughs> Jediah, listen to me. Gladly, gladly. Claudia and Nicholas are married. They are man and wife. No. <laughs> man and wife. No. <laughs> Cousin Jediah, what's that telegram in your hand? For a what? It's telegram. Oh, it's not a... It's a cablegram. Mm, a New Year's message from Paul. Found it on the doorstep. Let's see. It's to the whole family. Dear mother and dad and family, the world doesn't know nor care that a new year is being born here where I am. I know you're all gathered as usual, and my spirit's with you. Love to you all. From your brother and son, if it ever gets through the censors. Paul Bob. For it is unto you that we turn. Blessed be America forever and ever. And may her freedom become our freedom in the days to come. Paul, something is going to happen tonight. Oh, you are writing a letter? No, not a letter. What do you mean something's going to happen? Wait. Dear, 
I think we are being put on the trail of Patricia Baldwin. That's great. First day out of bed. Yes, I do not know exactly. You will have to be transported for a day or two, naturally. I don't know exactly what is happening. But Richardson said to come back here, and I think he said, be prepared. <laughs> Sounds like a boy scout got loose in our midst. <laughs> here, what is that paper you have written, if it is not a letter? Look at it, if you like. I was just sitting here thinking. But, Paul, this is poetry. Is it? But yes, of course. Please, I may read it. What a... Yes. And his voice was an European voice. And his words came saying, How is our glory become dim? How is glory and honor and tradition changed? The stones and the mortar of our very homes are poured out into every street. The precious sons of Europe, comparable to goodness and truth, how were they esteemed as our today and our tomorrow? The work of the hands of the Creator. How are they broken and ground beneath the heel? And woe are the daughters of Europe, one so fair to look upon. Woe are they, for now their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. They are become like unto a stick. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet embrace bitterness and filth. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For the sins of their leaders and their politicians and the iniquities of their traitors have shed the blood of the just in the midst of all Europe. Remember, O oh America, what has come unto us. Consider and behold our reproach. Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Our great men have sinned and are not. And we have borne their iniquities. Violence rules over us. There is none that doth deliver us out of its hands. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because there is too little for too many. The women of Europe are despoiled and the maidens in the cities of all our fallen countries. The young men have fallen low in dishonor and in shame. And the children are trampled beneath the wheels of despair. Our elders have ceased their praying. And our youth, they are hoping. The joy of their hearts is ceased. Their dancing is turned into mourning. For this our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. You, O oh America, remainest as ever. Thy freedom from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long a time? Turn thou unto us, O oh America, and we shall be saved. Renew our days as of old. Yea, for it is unto you that we turn. Blessed be America forever and ever. And may her freedom become our freedom in the days to come. Blessed be America forever and ever. Well... You sat here and wrote this in those few minutes I left you? With the help of lamentations, of course. Oh, I do not know it. I was sitting here a long way from home, thinking of America and things that reminded me of home. 
I knew quite a lot about Lamentations and the Psalms, among others, at one time. I don't know from where you got your inspiration, but you have made Europe talk from the heart with these lines. You read them from the heart. I'd forgotten what a good platform speaker you were before you got there. That is it. That's what? I will see. Oh, you came quickly. Who is it, Nicolette? The secret airplane to where? In Istanbul? Paul, he says a secret airplane to Istanbul is ready. Is Patricia Baldwin in the capital of Turkey? They promised to point our faces in the right direction. Istanbul points toward Europe. Yeah, and a certain iron curtain. This week, Clifford produces a book of horoscopes. This is old Dr. Barber's Prognostications and Almanac, 1948 edition. Here, here. Uh, I must say, it looks like a big year for the Sagittarius people, with Scorpio and Leo coming in for a big chunk of good fortune, too. Wonderful. When is this slather of riches due to be for? <laughs> no, old bird starts tonight. Certainly no later than tomorrow. Well, what about Pisces? Pisces, Pisces. Here it is, Pisces. You are going to receive the surprise of your life. When you taste the new Chase and Sanborn coffee, <laughs> it's so greatly improved that it's the most satisfying coffee you ever tasted. Well, here, here, that's a wonderful. Now, say, this is the most accurate horoscope I've ever heard. Yes, uh, sir. Now, let's take Taurus, Cancer, and Gemini. Um, you are from Missouri. You have to be shown. You invented the phrase, the proof of the pudding. Big pardon. The proof of the flavor in this new blend is the tasting thereof. So taste Jason Sanborn now. Well, I got the Cornish and Aquarius people excluded from this new coffee experience? Oh, not by a long shot. Why, Capricornus tells Aquarius, the new Chase and Sanborn is the richest, most flavorful coffee money can buy. Virgo, Libra, and Irish people say, taste it, taste it now. I do, I think I shall. Will you join me, Pisces, Leo, Gemini? Yes, yes. sir. <laughs> There's a big new flavor thrill for everybody in the new improved Chase and Sanborn. It's coffee 1948 here right now. Taste it. You get more flavor from finer coffees at its best and freshest in the vacuum pack. It's something new in your coffee cup, so don't miss out. Ask your grocer for Chase and Sanborn, the amazing new coffee sensation. You just heard Chapter 14, Book 64 of One Man's Family, written and produced under the direction of Carlton E. Morse for the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee and Fleischmann's Yeast. The opening chapter of Book 65, entitled The Dying Fires of Europe, will come to you next week at this same hour. What's new on the bed plate for 1948? Well, we all like a change. Sweet rolls today, Parker House rolls tomorrow, coffee ring for breakfast, delicious dessert bread for dinner. If you bake at home, use Fleischmann's yeast for an almost endless variety of good things, and every bite delicious. Fleischmann's yeast is nature's own little wonder worker. It transforms dough into food, brings it to life, gives it tempting, tasty appetite appeal. Yes, Fleischmann's yeast glorifies all the other ingredients, brings out their flavor, gives you home baking results you can always be proud of. Use Fleischmann's yeast as your right-hand helper in the daily task of pleasing the family. Get that sincerest of all compliments, the call for another roll, another bun all around the table. You can depend upon Fleischmann's every time for fast, sure-rising action, for lightness, even texture, and delicious flavor in everything you bake. Always ask your grocer for Fleischmann's yeast, the favorite for 80 years. One Man's Family comes to you from California. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank you.